Hello, this is Angelica Yingst, and you're listening to Centered, Grounded Conversations About the Metaphysical. Today's conversation is with Sharon Muzio. Sharon was my first guest on Centered because she's one of my closest and dearest friends. I've been wanting to have another conversation with her. Um, and this week we were talking and it just seemed natural to record a very timely podcast around what we were talking about. Uh, Sharon owns and operates AltaView Wellness Center. I'm a practitioner there along with an amazing group of body workers and energy healers and just, it's just awesome. She's created a beautiful space for us to practice. She has extensive body work experience. Um, Sharon has practiced critical care and rehabilitative nursing since 1979. She is an aromatherapist and a Reiki master practitioner. Sharon practices shamanic healing. Um, we do a shamanic healing circle every month. Um, and we've been doing that for the past three or four years. Um, she really is focused on empowering women of all ages. Um, Sharon has several certifications in specialty body work, um, including like prenatal massage, deep tissue, reflexology, facial reflexology, myofascial work. She studied movement modalities and she incorporates them into her myotherapy sessions. Sharon serves as a volunteer for the National Massage Board's Ethics and Standards Committee. She's the creator of the Spirit of One is Holistic Expo, which is the largest spiritual expo in our area, and it takes place the first weekend in October. Sharon has a private mentorship practice, and um, she's just, she's been a mentor and a leader in this community in central Pennsylvania for a long, long time. I asked her to join me today because we were talking about 2020 and 2021, um, and I do a yearly vision board workshop and I've done it for the past six years at Alta View Wellness Center. Um, I hold it on the first weekend of the year. So January um, 3rd this year, it's on a Sunday, but uh, she has come to every single one of them. And what we do is in the beginning of the day, we we're in meditation. Then the afternoon we create vision boards around what we've envisioned 2021 or the year coming up to be like for us. Um, and one of the things she talked about was the the, the skill set that we have now after going through 2020. And it just made my brain fire in new ways. And it really helped me see 2020 with new eyes. And um, so I really thought this would be a great conversation. And I hope you enjoy it. I just want a, a little audio note here is that we both have dogs that bark. Um, I have a little Jack Russell and um, she has a Labradoodle named Bronx. And, um, so this happened quite a few times during the recording. I've, tr I've edited most of them out. What we did was just stop talking and then I could edit them, but there were a couple that happened right at times we were saying something. So I left those barks in. Um, and I just want you to know that's just part of who we are. I've tried not to stress about anything like that too much. So I hope you enjoy my conversation with Sharon Muzio. One of the things I think is important for 2021 is like what are we carrying with us you know and I, I i know i've been talking about this a lot i talked about it in my readings this month but you know this idea of like are we going to stay in a constant constantly traumatized place we're being traumatized all the time or are we going to be past it and healed you know like are we going to be like i've been through that um i can i can use that um because i feel like we're really called to like walk into a healed place you know rather than a healing place where we're constantly trying to figure out what's wrong with us you know yeah. at what point we're like all right i'm ready to move forward i'm a nurse so i always think about illness in some degree or some level that's kind of in the back of my mind so i i guess sometimes i forget that lay people or non-medical people they're not thinking about that. You know, for example, flu season, like I'm constantly carrying wipes and wiping door handles and, you know, not touching things I don't have to touch because I have that mindset. But the general person in this world is not looking at germs and they're not living their life thinking about 
hand washing all surfaces of their fingers and all this yeah. kind of stuff. And so I think 2020 has really been a burden because that's been added to people's psyche. People are constantly vigilant, in yeah. some cases, hyper vigilant. I think it's spilled over a lot into life. Um, and our behaviors and our social behaviors and all of that, obviously it has, but I think that, um, it's also empowered us in ways that we haven't maybe considered. And as we talked the other day and you said, I like that. And I said, we have a new skill set that we're walking into 2021 with, we have become more mindful of our behaviors and more deliberate about what we choose to do. Absolutely. And yeah. And I think that that's a gift of the year. Um, it's been a roller coaster ride, definitely, uh, emotionally and on, on lots of levels. Many people have gotten sick. Many people have lost loved ones. Yeah. Um, many people have, have lived in fear. But all of this stuff that we've experienced has, again, changed our behaviors to where we're not um, just jumping around, doing this, doing that. We're planning our days more deliberately. We're choosing uh, our encounters more mindfully and we're being mindful when we're doing what we do. Um, not that mindlessness is bad. I mean, it's great to just like zone. I know, how much, how much Netflix did we do this year? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it, it per and it's perfect, like it's, to hang yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, you need it. You need the mindless times. But I, exactly. I, I love that idea that we've been very mindful this year. I definitely have. And it's interesting when you talk about a new skill set. Um, it just kind of made me think of like when you did that Brene Brown um, book study and we talked about resilience because yes. that's kind of the positive response to trauma and I think we've had a collective trauma this year you know which is we come out hopefully more resilient than we even knew that was possible for us you know I agree with that I don't think we give ourselves enough credit for how resilient we are as humans the one weird thing about this year that's been I find even more difficult than doing is not doing Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like the, yes. the, when my friends are sick, I always want to make them food or yes, you their, do <laughs> or clean their house or do yes. something because I feel so helpless. It's like, I want to fix it. And that's kind of like my workaholic -y Capricorn thing. And it's not necessarily bad instinct, but sitting still and being uncomfortable and not being sure what's going to happen to my friend is much more difficult for me than if you ask me like, oh, could you cook me dinner every night for a week and drive it over and do this? I'm like, yeah, I can do that. I, I'd love to do that. That's something. It's yeah. keeping my brain occupied. But we've been asked to just sit still. And what has happened since we've sat still is, you know, there's been uprisings. People are pissed off, you know, like they're starting to realize the injustices that are happening as they're sitting still. And, and it's, it's good. They're all good shifts, I think, but you know, it's definitely not comfortable. No, no. And, and the fact that we've, we've had to make big adjustments to things that are just traditions for us in our life. Yeah. Um, like birthday parties, yeah. like weddings, um, big things that are, you know, they mark time in our life cycle, mm -hmm. um, births and, and deaths and christenings and dedications yeah. and moving, you know, moving. Just think about it. if you are buying a new home or going to a new place to live, having to move like the logistics of the movers and someone recently said, I don't want to move because I don't want the movers to touch all my stuff and they might have COVID and I won't know it. And then it's all my stuff. And yeah. it's like, wow. So yeah, I mean, but yet we're resilient in the fact that we drop back and punt and go, okay, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to change that plan. Um, I'm going to face it in a new way of seeing it because I don't have a choice. Yeah. You know, that has been what I've seen. People have made some amazing shifts in 
their traditions. They've made amazing shifts in their planning and what they're doing. I mean, because you're forced to do it. <laughs> you right. don't have a choice. Yeah. As someone in recovery in a 12 step program, I mean, we've gone from meeting in person, seeing people, touching people, hugging people, um, looking in their eyes to see if they're drunk, to doing Zoom meetings with people. And when it started, people were like, I'm never doing a Zoom meeting. And you know what? It did not take long for those Zoom meetings to be totally full. And now I can't even imagine having a 12 step. Like, why didn't we have this option all the time? Like, I go to so many more 12 step meetings in isolation than I did in real life because I used to have to travel and everything was like 20 minutes and then I'd get in there and then I have to travel back and you know that's a good two hours if I want to jump on a meeting now I just take my phone with me and I can do the dishes and go to an AA meeting you know I can get stuff done around my house it's been an interesting shift to watch like how how much we've adjusted to it like you and I doing our shamanic work we've been able to adjust to zoom. I mean, yeah. it's been really cool. And I've, you know, I've had people in my uh, zoom shamanic journeys from uh, Bali and uh, England and, you know, across the country. It's, it's really cool. It is cool. It does feel like the world is smaller. Yeah. And I think that some of those shifts, they felt forced back in March. Yeah. Um, we started to become accustomed, accustomed to them like by June. Yeah. And then they became what we did just like, that's just what we do. And we've gone through this rest of this year with just saying, well, that's what we do. We don't like it. Um, but we've, we've become accustomed to it. We, yeah. we don't like it, but we've learned how to do it. And in some cases there's parts of it that we like even more. Like one of the things I was saying uh, with you, we were speaking about before we started the podcast was for some people, and whether you're introvert, extrovert, whatever, I don't really know how to quantify which you would be to feel this way, but um, the holidays are really hard and like they don't want to get together with their family or they yeah. don't want to get together with the extended family or the in-laws or the, you know, uncle Fred and cousin Ted, they don't want to do that. Yeah. So COVID's been like a gift. It's like, I oh, can't come COVID. You know, they don't want to go to the birthday <laughs> gatherings down the, can't come COVID. So it's been a gift in a weird way because people have been able to hide behind COVID mm -hmm. and they've been able to put it first because it's so much a part of everything um, that they could, you know, retreat and, and enjoy the retreat. But there's going to come a day when it's not going to still be there yeah. uh, to that level. So, I mean, I want to say, hey, that's great that you have that, you know, and for me, I get it. Um, but maybe you want to work on some things for 2021 that empower you to be able to still say can't come. Um, but without the COVID, you know, just yeah. feel empowered within where you are and what your story is and what your purpose uh, for not going is and be able to say, I can't come this year and leave it at that and not feel like you have to explain yourself or, you know, give a reason or give an excuse, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we can gain some empowerment from these opportunities that have come and as you perceive them as opportunities um, to be able to stand in our power and say, no, just, I can't commit to that. Um, and I think one of the things is what you said about the isolation is that it's given us opportunities for more focus on self-care, not selfish. Yes. I think people miss that thing, but we are home. So, Hey, I could draw a bath because I have time to take a bath or I could um, read that book that's been sitting on the shelf for months because I never have that time to read. I can have that time now. So these are things that can empower us to be our better selves, so to speak, um, because the gift of COVID, if you will, <laughs> has given us those opportunities. Absolutely. I love, I mean, I love that. I find that I'm so much more sensitive to energy when I do go out, you know, like I am very aware of how close someone is to me. And I allowed people my energy field all the time that didn't feel good, that wasn't 
resonant with me. Uh, like I said to you, I mean, I think of COVID as like, yes, it's a virus and a germ and we, you know, we can quantify that, but like, that's how negative energy feels. It's like a germ and we catch it sometimes when we're around somebody who's negative, you know? So like, we can treat it like, hey, I don't want to catch your bad vibes. And it sounds so like, um, you know, hippie to say that, but the truth is like, we're allowed to set boundaries around that we're allowed to say no just because we don't feel like leaving for our holidays i mean you know how i remember in my early life when my parents got separated and i had to do like half of a day at my mom's and go to my dad's and go to my grandparents and like all of this traveling i never felt like holidays were refreshing or relaxing and this year I felt really rejuvenated after ho the holidays because I could just relax and do what I wanted. And, you know, we stayed in Christmas jammies on Christmas. Like, when do you get to do that? It's awesome. Yeah, you know? it's a gift. It totally is. Yeah. And you're right about, I agree. And I say you're right because obviously I'm agreeing. Um, <laughs> when you're around, even just in a supermarket, I was at the giant today. And, um, you know, people do keep a better distance. I mean, they're more mindful of personal space. That's something that used to really annoy me when I would be in line somewhere. Uh, and, and even aside from holiday lines, because I'm not a big holiday shopper, but just a general, you know, I go to Old Navy, they're having a sale. I pick up a couple blouses and the person behind me is up my butt. Oh, and it's God. like, dude, back up. And yes. you just like, they're talking on their cell phone and they're mindless of everything. And they're, you know, it's, I don't know. They're, I could feel their energy behind me. And I want to say back the fuck up, you know, get yeah. away from me. But you don't say that because you don't know what they're carrying in their pocket. <laughs> but aside from that, you're feeling that energy. It's uncomfortable. And so that's one of the things that I dislike about going to stores. And I tend to be more of an Amazon shopper or an online shopper for those, for that reason. But yeah. lately, and today's an example of that mindfulness is that because of COVID, people are not getting in your personal space. They're most people. I'm not saying that people don't do that they there are still people that are probably not believing it and so and not wearing masks i was shocked there was someone that. today without a mask on yeah i, I saw her. six people at the giant last time i was there without masks and i was i was so livid i i sent an email to giant to saying what is your policy here you know are you asking us to regulate these people or are you regulating these people um because you notice when people aren't being mindful of other people, you know? Yeah. And I understand that not everyone likes the masks and all that, but you know, that's the sacrifice we make as a, you know, community and for the collective. And I think that that's also a big takeaway from this year is like, we have to do small things to help the greater good of everyone. And it only works if we all do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's useless if only half of us do it. Well, that's such an important point. The small things become the big things. Mm -hmm. And, and that's important too. in thinking about next year is like looking at all the little things that, you know, make you feel good about yourself in a day, you know, Hey, um, you know, something you did turned out really well not your appearance, not that physical part. I don't mean that. I mean, achievements or accomplishments that you've had through the day or kindnesses that you've shown through the day, like those things build you up. And yeah. if you stop and think about them, it's those little things that really empower us and wearing a mask for someone else or being kind in like, even if you have a wipe in your hand or something, holding the door for the next person, letting them in so they don't have to encounter the door at all. They yeah. just walk by it. You know, those little things, think about them in the course of a day, how much altruism you show others, how much giving of yourself you do. And that is so empowering to your soul because we are a collective of energy. We are- yeah all here having this human experience we're a bunch of souls having a human experience and we all interface with each other i think the world got very rushed and i don't mean like pre-covid i mean like the past 25 years the yeah. world's gotten very rushed we've you know gone into the 
um, you know, the digital age, we've tried to cram a thousand things in a day. And often that creates an energy of rudeness about us, or we're fretting, we're harried, we're moving quickly. And we're not thinking about others because we've got to get to the next thing or do the next thing, or we have a time constraint on ourselves because we've crammed so much into our day. And now since this has come, again, lots of things are canceled. Lots of things are not happening. Lots of things are, you know, probably even to the point of um, not going to happen for a long time. (laughs) So we have we have time to be nice. We have time to be kind. We have time to show concern. And and I think that all of those little things build us up. Well, it's interesting that you say that because I, you know, I notice like being overscheduled is one of those character defects I have. I I overschedule myself or I, I sign up for too much stuff. Um, You know, I, I'm a, like I said, I'm a workaholic. So that, that becomes a problem. And then I get resentful. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it all leads into this whole um, not being satisfied in the moment thing. Like I'm yep. stressed out about the thing I signed up for that I don't really want to do and seeing people, I'm burnt out from seeing people because I'm an introvert and blah, 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 blah. Well, this time I actually have had moments to rejuvenate. I've had that self-care time. I can sleep in if I want to. I can go to sleep very early. I can take a nap sometimes, you know, which is unheard of <laughs> other time, but pre-COVID. So what's interesting about that is then I come into these situations, they're very mindfully decided. Where am I gonna, who do I want in my pod? Who do I wanna interact with? Where do I wanna put my energy? I can't do all the things because then I expose people I really love to other people that they don't know and that's not fair i mean it's kind of like a sexually transmitted disease right exactly (laughs) you really think about who you're gonna have sex with you're like do i trust that person do i trust who they've been with um it's the same thing with this you know so then when i come into those situations i'm so grateful for them yeah like you know i've gotten to see you of you know through covid and it's like when i get to see you i feel like i feel like i've drank a like a bunch of energy juice you know like I feel so (laughs) refilled you know because I I feel that (laughs) I need it so much because I've been you know uh isolated and I I'm really excited to be with the people that I choose to be with and I I love I love the um being able to make that decision now I'm not sure I can go back (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to like being over scheduled and doing too much and all of that it just doesn't feel good in my soul well I think one of the gifts of the this year is seeing what that feels like because many of us haven't ever had that opportunity to do what you just said we've always just gone with the flow we've you know you go from you're, you're being a kid and your parents are telling you what to do to getting you know getting into college having a few wild moments and then doing what your boss tells you to do and everything's very scheduled and then you have your own kids and they're scheduled and they're in 47 different activities and you're in your car eating mcdonald's taking them from place to place now that gift has been given to us to see what it's like we know we've become empowered in a sense to see what it's like to make choices and say well i'm going to pick these two things and that's what we're doing that's you know as a family maybe making a decision. We're going to do these two things, not these 15 things and cutting yourself back from all of that stuff, cutting yourself back from living in your car and going from thing to thing and place to place and having the opportunity to be as opposed to do. Yes. Um, Yes. You know, it's a wonderful feeling to just be, but again, until now that wasn't a mainstream idea. But now people that are not in the metaphysical, they're not in the meditative, they're not in the yoga, they're not in the woo-woo where we live, you know, in our world. Um, And they're seeing, I like to just be, I like to just be home and we're all reading books and there's some quiet music playing in the background and the dog's taking a nap. Wow. It's like a a modern Norman Rockwell painting. (laughs) It's like, we've forgotten all that or we never learned it. You know, if you're, if you're 25 years old, you never learned it That's right. because you, you grew up and you 
ran constantly and your parents ran you constantly, yeah. you know, and they, and they felt compelled to run constantly because all the neighbors in the neighborhood in suburbia were constantly running in their minivans. And so they got soccer mom stickers and little stick figure people in the back of their car and their dog and their cat and their bird, you know, and, and constantly having out. texts come in and beeps yep. and dings and whatever yep. on your phone. Like, you know, when I was a kid, we had a rotary phone and yep. that was it. You know, you didn't, you didn't have constant contact with people. So you had a lot of that long time, you know, to lay in the grass and look at the sky and do weird shit that you don't do now you know <laughs> make my think pies. COVID's given us like that is a real gift of it just that you know one thing I, I noticed this year is like I have a kayak we have a couple kayaks and I wanted to get more because my kids I'd love to take them you know we only have two and you couldn't buy a kayak this year because everybody would they were buying kayaks because everybody can only do stuff outside right so it's like you can't buy mountain bikes are sold out kayaks are sold out which means we're kind of trying to figure out like how do i um how do i be outside how do i be in this open space how can i i can spend time with people without being all up in their shizzle in their house you know doing this work thing like we can actually spend time together and i love that i love that i couldn't find a freaking kayak this year because people were using them people were buying them people were exploring outside i mean that's another really positive i didn't i didn't think when we were going to talk about this that we would talk about all the positives of this year but i love that we're doing this because we need a reminder of the gifts of yeah you know. being outside is definitely a gift i walk my dog every day if i didn't have him i wouldn't probably be motivated to walk yeah. every day we both deal with autoimmune issues and sometimes getting up and walking isn't easy, but mm -hmm. he's my motivation. He enjoys it. I enjoy walking with him and um, it's become a thing. And I, I love it. I love to be outside. And again, for many people that bought all the kayaks online, they may never have done that, or they may not have done it since they were 12 or they went to camp, whatever. Yeah. Um, now they're doing it with their families, their children, their friends, whatever. But again, another gift, a gift of being with mother Gaia, a gift of earthing, walking on the ground and feeling that earth come up through you. Not, you know, not the, uh, the thing that probably would happen if it wasn't forced, but yet yeah. the gift nonetheless. Yeah. So, you know, there's only a couple more days until it's next year yeah 2021 yeah. you know one of the things i wanted to say too is when you said hey we've got a new skill set you know what immediately popped into my head is the tarot's celtic cross and that number seven position which is the talents and resources and how it's like sometimes in that position you get like the tower or like some really negative card and or challenging card and whenever I do, I think this is our new skill sets. Like we're able to handle the tower, you know? So when I get it in that position, I don't think, oh, this means that something terrible is going to happen to you. I always think of it as, hey, you've got everything you need to face anything you've got. You know, you have this new skill set. You've been through the tower already, or yeah. you, you understand heartbreak. If you get the three of swords, heartbreak is part of what you can deal with well my card for this year is the devil for 2021 is it? yeah 2021 is the devil mm. and i'm like wow okay interesting you know but i have the skill set to deal with the devil and i know i do yeah um and it, it i've had it because um of my you know where I, the lessons i've had in my life but even more so this past year has been a test of everything yeah i don't think there hasn't there hasn't been a test that hasn't been provided to me <laughs> physical yeah. mental uh spiritual financial yeah all they've all come you know family issues and and, and uh you know whatever everything's come at me it's come at me <laughs> yeah they're coming at me you know um and so i'm ready i think my my skill set has been uh 
as the, the word that you use so beautifully in the beginning of this conversation, resilience. Um, and I think that that has been shown to me over and over again. And so I'm ready for the devil card. <laughs> I remember when it was your card one year. Oh God. Yeah. That <laughs> bastard. It's our Capricorn. Not card. excited. I know. I know. It's an interesting <laughs> card because when you break it down to the lovers is the other part of it. Yeah. Cause it breaks down to a six. So that's always interesting too. Cause you get both the, the beautiful Raphael energy, you know, that healing partnered energy and then you get the part of like yeah but i need to cling on to it because i'm going to lose it you know <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> obsessiveness yeah go ahead i'm sorry i'm working with the wheel of fortune oh nice and the magician <laughs> but the wheel of fortune is like fate you know which mm -hmm. i hate i hate the whole idea of fate because it feels you have like the fate. devil hanging out on your wheel i know it's rolling over him hopefully <laughs> well um we got a couple more days until 2021 and i just want to talk about like um i think it will be nice for people to realize that they are empowered to go in um 2021 purposefully yeah and with uh with clear intention uh as manifestors as 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 little magicians um and then they can walk into 2021 creating in their own personal bubble of their world um, anything that they want, manifesting anything that they want, all yeah. possibilities. It's a brand new year. Um, all possibilities are available. And I think that it's important to, to note that right now we're in a full moon cycle. It's the last full moon of the year. Um, it happens to be a water moon and it's, it's, a, it's moving through emotion and just so much of the baggage of what we've been through. It's a clearing time. So whether yeah. you're woo-woo or not, it's happening around you, yeah. whether you see the moon or don't see it, it's there. Um, none of that matters. But what does matter is knowing that you can do something to have a purposeful um, intention. So one of the things that I like to talk to people about when they ask me, well, what can I do? I say, you know, it, it's really simple. Draw a bath, soak in some Epsom salt, sit quietly, put some music on that you like, you know, the good old Chen Kenny G standby, if that's what works for you. And just meditate on, you know, all the crap of the year and all the good of the year. And then just kind of come up with a word that really feels like it comes up from that space, like between your heart and your navel, you know, yeah. from your solar plexus, that space, just let that word bubble up for you and be with it. Like think it, hear it, speak it, claim it. Uh, patience is one of my words for this year. Mm. I definitely need more of. And once that word comes, you'll know it's your word. You'll, you'll just feel it. It'll just come from that spot again, under your heart and before your navel, like in that area, you'll know it. And just um, kind of focus on bringing that in for the year. You know, if your word is love, then focus on bringing that in for the year. If your word is trust, um, whatever word comes to you is powerful. Other ways to do words is write down a bunch of words on a piece of paper yeah. that really makes sense for you. Write them all down and then cut them up and fold them over and then ask spirit to guide your hand and choose with your non-dominant hand. Some people would advise choose a, three, three words. Bronx's word is bark, bark, rough, bark, rough. bark, rough, rough, rough. <laughs> I love, I mean, I, you know, I work with the word of the year and I, I find it so helpful as a guidance and I've picked words that I think sound cool that I never work with. It, it really has to resonate and it really has to be important, you know? Yes. Um, but sometimes not cool. It's kind of like how we work with guides and stuff. You know, we want the cool shiny guides or we want that word that sounds cool, but what we really need is the one that, that makes us feel the chills and gets us to where we need to be. I don't know yeah. what my word's going to be this year, but. Well, my word like for it's... last year in hindsight is stink, stank, stunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
love i mean i like like meditating in water is such a good i good suggestion because of this watery cancerian full moon we could really use the water to our advantage you know yes yes uh, we can release like in water too i was kind of talking about that how you can you know write a word in salt in you know on something and then put it in the water and just watch it disappear you know yes we can do all kinds of things to release in water too and call a long time ago when we were starting the practical magic series and you and i were having one of our meetings either at a restaurant or our one of our homes you said well basically we're trying to get the point across about magic that it's like either you're you're pulling in and you're drawing in or you're releasing and you're letting go and it it was like yeah it was so profound when you said that (laughs) although everything you do is a calling in every you we do is a calling in or a releasing and what's good about the full moon is you know you can do both right energy of the full moon traditionally i like to work when you don't see the moon as we know with the new moon to draw in but but in this full moon we can we can release so another really good point like you said is let go of stuff that doesn't any longer yeah. serve your highest good. That's one of my favorite lines. And so releasing as well as drawing in at the same time in that bath or doing some kind of water ceremony outside. One cool thing a person could do, I know it's cold out and I know water will freeze, but if you took salt and water, it won't freeze. Um, and you write your salt, your words in salt in something, pour water on it and let it sit out under the moon. That just absolves dissolves and gets rid of it completely it's a weird kind of little way to uh, melt so to speak melt away those words so they might be the word might be um you know it might be simple you know less than it might be well um, you call it yeah and you're calling impatience you could literally just let go of impatience exactly impatience like you have the perfect you know one and one and the other you can use those phrases they sound simple but they're they they pack a lot of punch when you say i release impatient and call in patience you know yes so i think what people don't realize is you don't have to be like uh title to high priestess or be (laughs) one of the alta view practitioners or when you set your intention um that is powerful when you tell spirit my intention is this spirit hears you and responds to you um i remember back when oprah and i'm going back to like late 80s when oprah did the first vision board um and lady wanted this i don't know a gen air i think it was a gen air stove like a 500 stove you know back in the 80s that was a lot of money um, and she put it on her vision board. She cut it out of a town and country magazine, put it on her vision board. And then that year she got that, um, that, that special um, stove. That was the hit, you know, oh, you can get a Lexus, you can get this and that. That's not what vision boards are about. But in, in a weird, perverse way, you can manifest things to yeah. come to you, not stuff. I don't think stuff so much but i think you can manifest things to come to you and you don't have to have any kind of you know we you and i don't have to bless it no one has to do anything it's it's their own thing and and that resilience that came from 2020 should show hey i got through 2020 i can do anything you know i homeschooled my children and i i i learned how to cook with you know cook with canned meat or whatever it might have been <laughs> or work with things that were not toilet paper to wipe my butt with whatever it might have been yeah. um you can call in or release at this season these next you know today especially is a good day um whatever doesn't serve and call in what you want yeah and manifest that for 21 yeah and i think you know i love that you're empowering people to do um what is traditionally thought of as like magical workings or rituals or whatever you know like we put a lot of fancy names on but you can do intention setting without having a title like you said or without having to know every book that's in the metaphysical section of your bookstore and you know it's about the intention that you set you know people are always like what rock is good for what and i'm always like what rocks do you have 
you know, let's, <laughs> you tell me what you got and I'll tell you which one might be best, but like why go out and spend and do, and, and, you know, that whole material part of it loses the focus on what you're actually trying to do, which is, you know, how do you feel? What do you want your spirit to do? You know, what, what's going on? Not that you shouldn't get the gen air oven if you want it. I mean, those things can be fun and important. You know, I cut out a picture of a dog that looks exactly like Louie the year before I got Louie and I didn't even put him on my board. I just cut him out because I thought he was so cute. And then last year I got a dog that looked exactly like that. And I was not intending to do that. I don't know. I love vision board work. And I know it's hokey for some people, but I find it's really so important for me. I need to have a place to rest my attention um, that isn't my head because it's a messy place sometimes. I know. I understand that. But for me, the vision board has always been very powerful. I've done them with you for several years, five years now. Um, and they, they have always been powerful. I keep them in my massage room. So I look at them often, um, and so much manifests in the year, but I notice the things that manifest are the things that I've really focused on, not just the, the sidebar things like, uh, the weight loss thing that never manifests. Well, because I, I try it for a while and then I I'm right back to eating a bag of, uh, Crunzel Tom Sturgis pretzels. You're not going to lose weight if you eat the pretzels <laughs> just because you put a skinny walking lady on your board. Like, come on, you got to focus on that. And I know that. So I jokingly say, yeah, I'm going to try that again, but it's usually not my focus. My, my focus is more about manifesting, you know, positive growth or whatever yeah. it might be, you know, on other levels, but but um, what's interesting, just to interrupt you for a second, like sure. you put the walking skinny lady on, but you walk every day now. Yes, I do. You I know do. what I mean? Like, yes, it's yeah. like, like spirits, like, yeah, I see what you're saying, but like the walking is the important part, not the skinny part, you know? Yeah. So I am the walking fat lady. <laughs> <laughs> I also do the same thing. And then I end up do it like spirit gives me what I need, not what I want. Exactly. <laughs> exactly <laughs> i did a lot of funny things on my board last year which is like i put like antlers on the buddha and i put a bunch of like different color buddhas on there and you know just to like have fun and i i feel like lighter at the end yeah. of this year and i like that and i think i'm gonna continue with that just this idea that like i can i can have lightness you know lighter lighter energy well, it's interesting that you say you felt a lot of lightness this year when most people feel a lot of heaviness this year and a lot of darkness this year. So you've really been seeing the light in all of it. Yeah. You called the I fun mean, in. It's true. Like I feel though that there were times when I was mired in that darkness this year. Like there were times I'm like, I don't have any business. My business is closing. Nobody interested in getting crystal healings anymore. Like I just kind of was like, would get like in this spiral, this spiral down. And then I would focus my energy on something else. Like I taught a distance healing class and that was surprisingly, um, it just kind of opened up for a lot of people. And I'm seeing these fellow healers going like, oh, I can do distance work. Oh, we don't have to be in the same room to do this work. It's all energetic, it, it works. And just kind of remembering like every time I get <clears throat> mired in the darkness and in the shit, I have to always say to myself, and I think this is kind of what Wheel of Fortune is going to come in next year to say, which is like, hey, you know, we don't know how this is going to work out yet. Like you may be thinking that this is the end, but this is the beginning of a new thing, you know, and this is the beginning. Nothing is ever wasted. And that's been the energy that I've worked with, with Vulture for a long time, which is like, we don't waste any part of this experience. We haven't wasted any part of this year either. And that's how we're going to move forward, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Um, so I do feel like one of the lessons I took from this was just like, hey, yeah, I'm going to get down. I'm going to feel uh, defeated. But as I move forward, you know, I'm not going to waste any moment of it. 
I like that you said about not wasting any part of it because the ugly parts of it need to be kept, so to speak, as well as the beautiful parts of it. And if all we see are the ugly parts of it, then maybe we need to sit with them and look deeper to find the beauty in them because yeah. there's a little bit of both in all of it. I just think also right now it's a really good time to come up with some manifestation strategies so that yeah. we don't self-sabotage. Like it, people are notorious for those first, you know, month and a half, six, seven weeks of being on point with whatever resolution they came up with. And so I'm not a fan of the resolutions, yeah. uh, but I am a fan of manifestation strategies, which are ways to um, empower yourself to get to the thing you're looking to get for this yeah. year. So if you're looking to, um, let's say, read more books, you know, don't go on Amazon and order 15 books because you're probably not going to be reading all those books. And then you're going to feel like shit because you didn't read the books. And then you're going to be donating the books in a year from now and thinking, I never read those books. I'm just a failure. I yeah. set that goal and I didn't achieve it. So let's come up with a strategy and be like, okay, let me get the first book and let me find ways to incorporate reading in my day. And let me find ways to change some of the behaviors that I have that um, our time sucks, like maybe Facebook and switch it out for a book. Instead yeah. of having my phone in my hand, I'm going to have my book in my hand. And as you work in a manifestation strategy towards that, reading more books you start reading more books yeah yeah but you don't put this weight on yourself of those 15 books yeah and and things like that I mean that's just a simple example but if we if we think about that now with this moon right now today tomorrow the next day really think about you know what manifestation strategies can I incorporate to make 21 be a better year than 20 was and what is my new skill set that I got from 20? When you really sit with that and answer it clearly to yourself, I think what winds up happening is you have a clear perspective for how you'd like to see this framework develop for the new year. Yeah. God, I love that. I mean, because I, I, I agree with that. Like, it's that whole, I guess it's a cliche of like, you know, um, God will help you move mountains, but you better bring the shovel. You know, you yeah. can't just like sit there and wait for everything does just align and if you go from zero to a hundred you have to go through one two three you know each step and i love the idea of coming up with strategies on how you're going to get there and that's where like working with a coach or working with someone like you like a mentor uh even doing tarot readings can be very very useful like what are the things i need to do you know you like you can ask the tarot those questions like what do I need to do? What do I need to call in to make this happen for me? You know, yeah. that's where I think like, you know, working with a, a mentor or coach can be very, very useful. Um, but I really want to go back to like the word self-sabotage um, because I, I get to ask that question all the time. Like, how do I, how do I work against self-sabotage? And my response is always you got to look at the shadow of what's happening like you have to look at what has prevented you from thinking you deserve this thing that you have you know like what has happened there but i don't know what do you tell people when they talk about self-sabotage well, well I, I asked directly like give me an example how, yeah. how do you do this? And usually it, it, it's, it's pretty clear what, what they're doing. <laughs> it comes from a place of unworthiness. So the, the lip service to themselves is, I want to achieve this, this, and this, but the underside within themselves is I'm not really worthy of achieving it. So yeah. I'm going to make sure I'm right. And so once I can help them to see that, and, and often that's not that difficult when, you know, they really oh. focus on, on what they've done or what, or what pattern they have. Um, I say, start with what you want to do in a tiny bite, like taste yeah. it first, just taste it like a, a morsel. Yeah. And once you've done that, then it's easier to bite off a bigger piece, but don't, mm -hmm. 
don't try to bite the big piece right away. I mean, you notice how I always have these food analogies. Isn't that kind of funny? <laughs> but yeah, I just love that. I mean, it kind of goes back to what we started this conversation with, which is like when I was like take when I was trained as shamanic practitioner or earth medicine practitioner, we talked about the fact that every everything has a spiritual illness that you're trying to work on. Like, what is the spiritual illness? The behavior is the solution to the spiritual illness. So, for example, it's like if I'm alcoholic, I, I drink uh, when I am like can't deal with the emotions of a situation. That's the solution to the spiritual illness, which is like I can't deal with the emotions. I can't deal with heavy emotions or I can't deal with um, being emotional. I can't deal with intimacy. I can't deal with, that's the spiritual illness. Then you know how you're sabotaging yourself when you're like, I can't quit drinking. It's like, yeah, we have to deal with the, how to feel emotions and how to deal with them. And then sometimes that goes way deep. I mean, that's a big, that was a big one to use, but uh, you know what I mean? It's like the yes. sabotage thing has to go deeper than just, I drink too much. You can't say, we'll just stop drinking. Cause that's actually the solution to the problem, not the problem, you know? Right. I just think when we talk about setting intention and, and what we want to call in, in the year, we forget to talk about the fact that self-sabotage is part of the work that we're going to have to do. We're going to have to contend with the fact that we don't always want the thing that we think we want. And when we start going through it and we start sabotaging, we have to really, really ask ourselves, did I set the right intention? You know, cause you can always change your intention. You can right. always say, I'd like to tweak this a little bit. Cause what I thought I wanted isn't actually what I want, you know? Well, that's um, important because you're not stuck. I mean, people, yeah. you evolve over this year coming. You've evolved over this year. You didn't walk in this year with the same skill set you're walking out with. Yeah. So that's a perfect thing, what you just said. You have to focus on this stuff for, you know, starting the year, but maybe in April, something shifts in April, something new is happening. Yeah. I, I mean, for me, uh, setting intentions kind of kind gets lost in that world of like spiritual bypassing and like oh just focus on what you want and don't think about anything negative and everything will be fine which i agree you know to focus on what you want but i also think a lot of difficult stuff comes up when you set intentions and it's not an easy path to forward you know for a lot of people because you have to contend with whether you deserve what you're asking for right um and I think in deep in people's heart, they start that process going, I definitely deserve this. And then when it comes, gets closer, they're like, I don't deserve it. Well, I think a lot of people don't give themselves a lot of credit for who they are and how much amazingness they have within themselves, if they're yeah, if yeah. such a word. We're all sort of hypercritical. I mean, maybe we've become more critical of ourselves this year because of things we couldn't achieve, or maybe if we're very task or goal oriented, it's been a hard year for us because we've not been able to achieve tasks or complete tasks or achieve goals. But I think underneath of it, if you could just see the magic within yourself, you know, see your yeah. amazingness, see, you know, all your goodness. And yeah, you're not perfect. None of us are, we're human, but, you know, just take a minute and take some inventory on, you know, the good of yourself and, acknowledging that you're human um yeah. i think that it, you can come up with better strategies if you do that we also acknowledge maybe i've sabotaged myself before and so i'm probably going to do that again this year you know say it like that but i'd like to be able to do it less i'd like to be able to um learn ways within myself to not do that you know, yeah. just kind of address it with, with yourself. Just do some of that self-talk where you acknowledge that you've had that history and you acknowledge that you're human, but that you're trying to do better. Yeah. You're trying to make it further. Uh, you're trying to achieve more or, or smaller goals, you know, just yeah. build, you can do building block goals too. That's the other thing you can say, I want to, I want to, um, I want to exercise more. So 
for the first three months of the year, I'm going to exercise 15 minutes a day. Yeah. That's it. And then you reevaluate in the end of March and, and you look back at it and say, well, I'm going to make it 20 minutes now or 25 minutes now a day. Yeah. And, and you just do a building block thing. You don't have to jump into the $50,000 gym membership and all the other equipment. Don't do that. Crazy. Do something tiny. Yeah. <laughs> I tend to be the one that goes to the big thing and then burns out. And so yeah, I think don't, that, don't do it. that's so useful to say, because a lot of us have that all or nothing thinking that just is so useless at the end of the day. Yeah, about 15 years ago, there was a woman, her name is Leslie Sansone. She came up with this really cool thing. It's called walk away the pounds. Yeah. And this is just on, on point to what we're talking about. It's an 18 minute, one mile walk. You do it in your living room. You're basically sidestepping, moving your arms. In 18 minutes, you've walked a mile, you feel good about yourself, you turn off the tape, the CD, whatever, and you, you've done something. Yeah. And you will be amazed at how many of my massage clients, older women, and men, I've, I've, I should get royalties or something for it because I've had them buy it and use it. So if you can't get to the mall, to mall walk, or you, you don't have sidewalks in your neighborhood, you certainly can walk away the pounds in your house for 18 minutes a day it's not about the pounds. It's about getting yourself moving. It's about yeah. lubricating your joints. You know, it's just about doing something, achieving something. 18 minutes is not a big time commitment, but that's my point. That's, that's yeah. a building block. Some people stay at that block and that works for them. Some people move on and go to the three minute. I mean, to the three mile thing, which is 45 yeah. minutes, whatever. Bottom line is you can make it work for yourself and, and feel good about yourself. If, if, if you're, just seeing it as this is helping me be a better me yeah That's all. exactly well sounds thanks. good huh <laughs> yeah it sounds good in theory right but how many times do you like ah, i'll do it a little later i'll do it a little yeah. later yeah it's really you know and that's where self-care becomes a really important buzzword that gets reevaluated which is like that is what self-care is you yes know? it's not about walk like you said not not walking away the pounds or having to have a lose weight goal but like if you're really interested in moving which is part of a, a holistic wellness plan is to just move your body then you know it's for you this is what self-care is it's discipline for taking care of your whole being not just your soul not just your mind but your body too so exactly you know. well thank you so much sharon thank um, you I'm excited to do the vision board with you. Me too. As we do every year, even in this COVID time, I think it'll be fun. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I hope some of our conversation helps people. And, and I would like to say, if anybody wants to get in touch with you or I at some point to, you know, talk a little bit more about how they can empower themselves more, we're available. Yeah. And we absolutely. can meet on Zoom. We don't have to meet in person. Yeah. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Ange. Love you. Love you. Thanks for listening to Centered with me, Angie Yinkst. If you'd like to send me a question or comment about this show or any shows, you can send them to angie at themoonandstone.com. 